No, you can't. No. Don't yeah, go that we're way. Have them turn around here. One year ago, the unthinkable swept the streets of South Bend. You can see this. Let's give you an aerial shot of what we're looking at behind us. You can see this is a street. 52 weeks later, those that lost everything to what only can be described as a historic flooding are still working to move on. It came up very fast. Um, on our field to the west of us, we had over nine foot of water by the time it was done. Some say the flooding goes much deeper than a freak occurrence. Uh, I'm very worried uh, as a mayor that there could be more where this came from. So could something like this? Maurice, let me stop you there for a second. You said you saw fridges in your street just floating. Uh, yeah. Ever happen again? This is the worst case scenario you can have. Tonight, ABC 57 News revisits a city underwater and the challenge that lies ahead. They said we've never seen anything like this in South Bend. Our special live team coverage starts right now. One year later, we are looking back in the historic flooding in South Bend. Yeah, many of you remember it well. Flooded streets, stranded drivers, and homes nearly washed away by historic flooding, mostly on South Bend's south side. ABC 57 News was the only TV station to stay up all night long, breaking down everything as it happened in real time, keeping you and your family safe. Tonight, we have live team coverage going back over what happened that night, but also pushing ahead to find out what this kind of weather really means in South Bend. ABC 57's Deanna Gutierrez and meteorologist Emily Kennedy are standing by right now with stories you will not want to miss. But first, let's hand it off now to ABC 57 Chief Meteorologist Tom Coombs. And Tom, you're live and one of the areas hit the hardest by the flooding. Brian and Colleen, yes, I'm standing here in the Twickingham Hills area, a much drier Twickingham Hills area than a year ago last year. And this was a recipe for disaster, this area. And before we get into why that is, as we remember the heavy rain and flooding, you may not be thinking about the man in charge of the city and what he experienced. I sat down earlier with South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg as he remembered the night those floodwaters began to rise. Let's go back to the night of August 15th. It rained all day and kept raining all night. Uh, when did the situation change from just it was an or abnormally rainy night to this is serious? You know, I, I remember as I was going to bed hearing the rain continuing to come down and it felt like that kind of downpour that, that we get often. That downpour seemed normal to Mayor Pete, but then... And I think as I was drifting off to sleep, I, I knew something uh, was wrong because it just it just wasn't stopping. The rain started falling and fast, and that's when he knew his city needed him. Uh, started looking at the calls that we were getting to the fire department, uh, the rescues that uh, that uh, they were being called out to do, and by two or three in the morning, I was in the emergency operations center with our command staff, uh, figuring out how to coordinate the response. That response was no joke, as ABC 57 News reported that night. But don't go down that way. You want to turn around. Boats were being dispatched to rescue people from inches of rainwater. The number of rescues that were going on made it clear that uh, this was a disaster, uh, not just bad weather. And uh, by the time the sun came up, the rain had stopped. By later in the day, I was visiting families that had been affected, their homes being compromised or even destroyed. And you'll remember, it was just before the first day of school. So there were kids the night before school you know, wandering around front yards and, and porches after their houses became unlivable. And that, and that recovery mode that Mayor Pete mentioned lasted weeks, but as we're reporting, some folks are still dealing with the fallout of those floods. And let's get to that story right now. Standing by, we're joined by ABC 57's Diana Gutierrez. She's live at Bethel College in Mishawaka, which actually helped out a lot of families in the face of that flooding. Diana? Well, according to the VP of the student development here at Bethel College, over 100 students got together to volunteer and help these South Bend families salvage whatever they could. Sean Holgren, the VP of student development, says it's hard to believe a year has elapsed. Bethel's involvement in the flooding is part of their mission statement. Holgren says each fall during new student orientation, they send out students to the community to serve. After the flood, he says several students were affected, and he knows even a year later, people are still displaced. Holgren remembers a student contacting the institution for help because they were victims of the flooding. And that's how they started becoming involved in changing the lives of those living on the south side. 
And so immediately the college met with that family and decided we want to we want to help in any way we can. And so we went on to offer them uh, one of our campus houses that was available and they're still living there a year later. Like I mentioned, service at this institution is just part of who these students are. Coming up on ABC 57 News at 6, I'll take you to the south side for a live look. Plus, we'll catch up with the family who's been dealing with this a year later. I'm live in South Bend, Diana Gutierrez, ABC 57 News. Diana, thank you. And now let's hand it off to ABC 57 meteorologist Emily Kennedy, who's standing by in the First Warning Neighborhood Weather Center. And Emily, how powerful can these floodwaters be? Tom, very powerful. Take a look at why the first warning neighborhood weather team took that night so seriously. In the event of flash flooding, water adds up quickly due to heavy rain over a short period of time. Now with that heavy rain adding up quickly, you're going to see it add up with the water because there's not enough time for it to soak into the ground and drains just can't handle water adding up that quickly. Now due to that, you start to see flooding across the area. But train also influences it due to the hills and valleys. You start to see water rush down the hills and roadways and start to collect in the valleys, causing even higher flood water. And that can cause some major issues when it comes to driving as well. Just six inches of water rising up can sweep a person off their feet and a foot and a half to two feet can actually sweep a car away with those rushing waters. This is why it's very important to remember in events like these to turn around and don't drown. During the flash flood event of August 15th, there were reports of over at least a dozen water rescues due to this. We'll have much more where that came from. Stay tuned during our 90 minutes of news as we continue to look back on the rainfall that changed it all.